Great talk. Let's talk a little bit about Jeremy Corbyn's week. Now, um, the UK news, it's been Jeremy 24-7. Phil, you and I were together in Cardiff at the Wales says, uh, hashtag refugees welcome rally. And the news, you could just sort of hear it riffling through the crowd at about quarter to twelve. There were cheers, weren't there? Yeah, there were cheers <laughs> and people murmuring and people couldn't believe it that uh, Jeremy Corbyn had been selected the Lieber of the Labour Party. And then shortly thereafter, within a few minutes, the pissy reaction by Labour front ventures resigning on Twitter. Uh, it's just, it was just unbelievable. And, you know, in the course of a few days, Sunday he formed his cabinet. He refused to do the Sunday shows, as he has all along. Um, but he quietly got several of the uh, dissidents on the cabinet, but I'm not sure they're convinced with his course of action. So let's talk about the interesting times, because that was meant as a curse by the Chinese. One of my, uh, my favourite uh, comments was, came from Al Jazeera, who said, he's crumpled and scruffy and he has p principles... He's nothing like a politician. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was brilliant, that. Brilliant. Dario. Yeah, it's, I've been thinking, I mean, I've been following it as you guys have, and I'm thinking about it a little bit this week, and I went down, I went to a TUC meeting um, in Brighton, because they were having their Congress, the sort of interloper, and uh, there was a great panel there of speakers, and one of the panellists was John McDonald, alongside, um, so he was, this was before he was announced as the Chancellor, and really interesting to hear this guy speak. And I think his appointment and some of the things that have happened in terms of getting the cabinet together, it speaks to some of the real problems that Jeremy Corbyn is going to have in terms of the tactics that he employs. I think it's OK being all about authenticity and truth, but he's going to have to learn to use tactics and strategy and he's going to need a media team because I think that there were things that, that happened in that first week that really sort of set him off on a bad footing. And for someone like me, who is, you know, much more to the centre than Jeremy Corbyn is, but you're wanting to give the guy a chance, you think, well, why did you make that decision? Because it's already led to criticism and brings along a lot of baggage and makes you look more hardline left than actually you probably could position yourself as. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yesterday was, was such an interesting first day for him. I mean, you know, the the whole national anthem disloyalty fiasco, oh. the uh, his driver uh, knocked over a BBC cameraman. <laughs> yes. And then he did a brilliant, I thought, Prime Minister's question time. I mean, he really he really came in and changed the tone and format of it. Uh, let, let's go to the, back to the national anthem fiasco. And well, the, he didn't, uh, just to explain, he didn't, as far as we know anyway, he didn't say the words to the national anthem. And this was a veterans kind of commemoration event. Yeah, the yeah. Battle of Britain thing, yeah. Uh, it's all sensationalism to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, what was that? You know, who cares? One of the people really? actually asked if he was, would he wear a, a white flower on his lapel on, on uh, Remembrance Day? And I thought, mm. wow, that's first of all two months away. And, uh, you know, that really, if you're looking for an issue, it was it was it was a classic example. Um, I was listening to the chat shows on BBC Five, and people were, as they typically get on these shows, just going left and right. Just one were hammering him for being disrespectful as a leader in Her Majesty's government, and the others were saying, you know, he's an individual. He has the right to free speech, the right to do as he wants to do. He did though. I mean, he did wear a tie. <laughs> and he stood up and stuff, yeah. didn't he? You know, I mean, uh, God, Bennett, I remember when I was at university and I graduated, and this is 1983 or something, and I didn't stand up for the, for the um, National Anthem, you know. And that was very trendy then, you know, not, well, not really trendy, but I mean, you wouldn't do that. But I mean, I pick up on what you're saying, Dario. I mean, these sorts of things, you know, it is, we all know it's nonsense, but these are sorts of things that are seized on by the media. And... Like John McDonnell, you know, I mean, his chancellor said some years ago, and I remember saying something similar to this, he said it was right, morally justifiable to assassinate Thatcher. Mm. And, um, you know... And the IRA comments. IRA terrorists should be honoured. That was 2003. Now, I'm sorry, but, you know, Basil and Mann is not going to vote for a person like that. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, you may not like the um, electoral systems we got, and I don't, but the bottom line is, he won't win 
a general election with comment with a chancellor like that. This is, this is the thing. He's going to have to find a way to speak and present himself in a way that does um, conform, let's say, to certain expectations without losing the authenticity and the, the sense that he's telling the truth. Now, you know, if he's a Republican and an atheist, the whole the phrase "God save the Queen" is you know something that you have difficulty putting yourself in line with. But I think. You know, should he have just sung the national anthem because it, it's created this media story that shouldn't have been created? I mean, but he has to he has to understand how the mainstream media works, and also it's taken away any kind of um, substantive investigation or coverage of his policies. His stand against, let's say, the the cap on welfare cuts, or his stand against the trade union bill. The mainstream media hasn't covered that at all. All they've covered is he never he never sung the national anthem yeah and it's so silly because i mean if you if you look at the there was a lot of substance yesterday um to 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 his day and you know just like with the um republican party debate if you look at all the headlines they're all about who said the stupidest thing or made the biggest gaffe and in what area and believe me when they talk non-stop for three hours you're going to have a lot of gaps yeah i mean you know these sorts of things take away from some interesting things he says, actually. And, you know, he is going to have to kind of, whether he likes it or not, you know, in terms of conforming to the media stuff and, you know, the election and stuff, things take, like this take away from that. Mm. And, you know, you may not like uh, the yeah. National Anthem, I don't, personally, but, I mean, you've got to, well, I mean, yeah. they've got to decide My, the whether United they United States are, National Anthem is a piece of crap. <laughs> You know, we're yeah. talking about rockets, red <laughs> glare, bombs bursting in air. So uh, national anthems in general are no good with the exception of South Africa's, which was yeah. written in 94, which is brilliant. I quite like